Hey folks, today we are talking about these things down here. They're called vocoders. Oh yeah, vocoders, baby, 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 yeah. We have this awesome Korg vocoder, which is always in the museum for you to play on. But for a limited time, we also have this uh, VP330 that I fixed for my friend Yuri. There's a video of me doing that on my channel, Hack Modular. Since we have both machines in the museum, it's probably a good time to do a video. And Sam, look mum, no computer, has already done a demo on this. <laughs> So we're going to be concentrating more on the history and how it works and trust me there's a pretty amazing story that you will not be expecting. Even if you've never heard of a vocoder you know the sounds of these because you've heard them on records like We are the robots. We're going to be a bit careful here not to get a copyright strike. <laughs> Mr. Blue Guy. So don't come after me, Mr. Copyright. So you'd think that vocoders were invented for music, but you would be wrong. They have much more to do with the things right in front of me here. The telephones. Vocoder is actually short for voice coder. And why do you need to turn your voice into code? Well, if you're having top secret conversations. During the Second World War, Churchill and Roosevelt needed a way to talk to each other on the phone. But of course, you don't really want anyone just listening to those conversations. And so Bell Labs, who invented loads of different stuff, uh, came up with a way of encrypting uh, the speech down the telephone line across the Atlantic. The machine was called Sig Sally and it was hidden in the uh, basement of Selfridge's department store in the middle of London. Quite an incredible machine that required uh, two vinyl discs to be synchronised uh, on different continents. Yeah. So I'll leave some links down below in case you want to do some further reading on that. But of course, if you want to encrypt an audio signal, well, you need to break that down into some kind of simplified data stream. And that is what the vocoder did. And so that absolutely means that when Winston Churchill and President Roosevelt were talking about the most serious issues possibly to have ever uh, faced the history of mankind, they were talking like this, like robots. What? Churchill didn't actually have to go to Selfridges every time he wanted to speak on the phone. They ran the telephone line uh, into the bunker that was underneath uh, Whitehall and installed the telephone in an old broom cupboard. And uh, to keep the secret, uh, they installed a toilet lock on the outside of the door so that it would seem uh, as if this was just Winston's private lavatory. There must have been a few questions when he had been on uh, extremely long conversations. Most likely, if you'd never had Churchill and Roosevelt speaking to each other over the telephone over the ocean, you would never have even had the Beastie Boys. Transatlantic diplomacy, transatlantic diplomacy. So let's talk about how vocoders work because they are fascinating. The most important thing to know about vocoders is that there are two audio sources. So that is the carrier, which is the sound that you're eventually going to hear uh, coming out of the speakers. Uh, and there is also the modulator, which you guessed it, modulates the carrier. Uh, and that signal, the modulator, is in most kind of cases, you'll hear it as uh, somebody speaking into a microphone. But it doesn't have to be that. It can be any audio source. The first step in the vocoding process is to analyse the modulator source, so what you're speaking into the microphone, okay? And what you're going to do to analyse that is break it down into a series of frequency banks. And we have some stuff in the museum to demonstrate exactly that process. This is a fixed filter frequency bank that Look Mum No Computer built, and you can hear 
in this audio clip that each one of these uh, frequency uh, bands here, uh, which is turned up and down by the individual knobs, isolates a specific band of frequencies within the overall spectrum. Once you have separated out these individual frequency elements, then the real magic can start happening. You look at each one of these uh, narrow bands of frequency and detect with an envelope follower the volume, the amplitude of the signal going into it. Now your speech, of course, is made up of many different elements, one of them being pitch. Uh, but if you just speak on the same note, you can still pick out the different mouth shapes, embouchures, that I am making to form the words, right? And that is what we're detecting with these uh, filter banks. Like if I move my mouth between an oo sound and an ah sound, it's very different, right? Ooh, same fundamental note and pitch, but very different frequency information. So that's what we're detecting with these frequency banks. So that is the modulator signal. So what is happening to the carrier signal? Well, exactly the same thing. We're also breaking that down into identical sets of fixed frequencies. Uh, and so what we can do is take the envelope follower information, the detection, the analysis information from the modulator signal, transfer that via some voltage controlled amplifiers to the carrier signal and that's how we transfer the formant information of our vocal to any sound source that you want to use as the carrier. It's quite amazing to think that you can break down the elements of human speech and simulate them or synthesize them uh, in this Way. You might have remembered that Look Mum No Computer did a very similar thing with Joan's organ. Because if you think about it, all of these different notes on the keyboard, well, it's just a bank of frequencies, isn't it? So if you play them fast enough uh, for to kind of blend together, well then, you can kind of simulate the formant of human speech. <laughs> Quite amazing, isn't it? And that is exactly the same concept as what is happening inside the vocoder. And you can use anything as the modulator or the carrier signal. So uh, we got a drum machine here. Why don't we send that in instead of talking into the mic? <laughs> the drums in a bit. Personally I kind of shy away from using vocoders in the more kind of like speech kind of way but I do really 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 like uh, the fact that you can just shape the sound the filter and spectral quality of the sound with your voice is so intuitive of a way to control uh, a filter, a, a set of filters. So it's way more responsive and interesting than just one low pass filter that you do with a knob. You can do it with your voice. <laughs> Comment down below and tell me your favourite vocoder song. I uh, have to think that when Churchill and Roosevelt were talking to each other, they just spent the entire time going, We are the robots. Because you just, you have to, don't you? I mean, it's the rules, you have to. If you have a vocoder, you have to do that. So if you liked this uh, little adventure into the world of vocoders, then you could probably like, like the video and even subscribe to the channel. Why not?
And if you didn't like it, well, there's loads more videos on the channel for you to go and check out. So stop being a grumpy guts. The link to Look Mum No Computer's demo of that Roland vocoder is in the description down below. You can come and play on this pretty rare uh, Korg VC10 uh, any time that the museum is open. And it's open every single weekend of the year. If you don't know, we are in Ramsgate in Kent, which is a short hop on the train down from London. So if you're coming to visit London, London from anywhere in the world, you can also come to Ramsgate, it's a nice seaside town, and spend some time with us in the museum. If you can't make it here but you still want to support the museum, then you can make a one-off donation, you can subscribe to the Patreon, you can buy the sample packs on our website, and the links to all of those are down below.